started with the forward and inverse problem. So remember, one of them is trivial. Of course, if you know your model outputs, if you know your parameters, you can, you know what your model outputs are. But if you know what your model outputs are, if you know that your V2 has to take a certain value, it does not trivially tell you what the parameters are. This is what Bayesian parameters are for. Bayesian parameter estimation is for. It's a systematic way to constrain your parameters given experimental beta by folding your theoretical uncertainty, your experimental uncertainty, your theoretical input. It's usable no matter how nonlinear your model is. It's usable even if you have a large number of parameters or a large number of observables. So it's very flexible. It's very powerful, and the result will always be a probabilistic constraint that you have to find how to best um, visualize. It can be, if you're lucky, it's going to be a Gaussian distribution in 1D if you're not lucky, or if the quantity you're looking at is non-trivial, you may have to look at credible intervals, different ways, different marginalization of your posterior. Now, it's important to know when to use a Bayesian parameter estimation. Again, here I assumed that our model was in good agreement with data and that we're only interested in constraining the values of a parameter. But you really have to make sure it's the case. If it's not the case, you probably have to consider a different question, which is which model best describe the data. You want to have a good understanding of the range of parameter that you want to probe. Um, so you need a minimum information about your prior. Um, you need to know what's the minimum value, and maximum value of the nucleon width that you want to probe, for example. You want to verify beforehand that your observable actually depends on the parameters that you want to study, just to make sure that you're not gonna get a trivial answer from your Bayesian analysis, which will be essentially a flat distribution everywhere. But more importantly, you want to make sure that your model is well behaved across the parameter space. So it's easy once you have a model and you know how to evaluate it for a subset of parameter, it's easy to simply say, well, I'll just increase the range of the parameter space and the, the, the Bayesian parameter estimation will, will tell me what's the best value. But it can happen that your model becomes less well behaved if, for example, you increase viscosity too much um, you have a very uh, spiky initial condition in your model. So there's a number of, um, there's a number of reasons why your model could start to misbehave if, or you could push your model simply in a regions where it's, you're breaking some assumptions about your model. So you want to be very careful about when you start to expand the parameter space, which you generally have to do, when you want to do a Bayesian parameter estimation, you want to be very careful about understanding your model well across the parameter space. So let me say again that the range of applicability of Bayesian parameter estimation is, is wide. Uh, you, can, you can use it with the Jetscape framework as model, which we've been doing. And I think, we'll, I think people will be very interested in our results, but you can do it with any number of models and any sets of data. Now, let me thank again Derek, Wayao, and Dan, and all the TAs for uh, their help up to now. And maybe I can answer a few questions now if there's any that haven't been asked.